Welcome back to Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. I'm ready to continue our blue team game here. It's uh, only been a couple of hours since I started the game. I had run off somewhere else and came back and uh, want to see if I can maybe not finish this game, but get a couple more turns in. Um, since um, I started playing before, um, I've had a little more time to think about this, and I'm still, at the moment anyway, uh, of the opinion that this is more or less what they described. I mean, this is, um, I mean, uh, not more or less as they described. I mean, like, if you have a genuine interest in cybersecurity, this isn't a bad game to play. It's hitting a lot of the right notes. But um, I was thinking, the, the game bills itself as being an educational game, and I'm not quite sure it's living up to that. And the reason for that is, is I, I was thinking, it, and it occurred to me, the game isn't really explaining any of these concepts. It's not explaining why the things I'm doing are important or uh, or even guiding me through, you know, different philosophies, uh, security models, and uh, we're not doing access control or, or any of that stuff. Um, so I don't know if it's educational. It's not really teaching, but, f uh, I mean, as you probably saw in my first part, somebody who's already got a background in this can relate to a lot of these topics and it, it does make a lot of sense for the discipline. So, um, there is the guide, uh, the manual that I found before that does explain the topics, but the game itself, unless you go out of your way to do that, it's not really explaining anything. And I feel like if you're going to go out of your way you're already, the game isn't teaching you, you're learning on your own. The game is just providing information at that point. I don't know. I, I, I'm still, let's keep going here. Uh, and I'm going to now continue playing with that in mind, the mindset of somebody who has an interest in cybersecurity, but doesn't necessarily know very much. And that's, I'm going to temper my, my expectations and, uh, and so on in that vein from now on. All right, I can't remember what we were doing exactly, but I see we're on 17 to 75. I got a minute and 20 seconds. I'm out of people and I'm just about out of money. So, And uh, after we get done with this blue team game, we are most definitely going to play a red team game so we can see from the other side what things are like. We got default creds on our perimeter firewall. Fucking for shame. So is that one. I need some people. I've been trying to figure out how to hire more people. I, I knew immediately from turn one that three people... Uh, was not going to do us for very long because <clears throat> typically when you have a, a cybersecurity team oh and that is another thing I, I realized as well the game presented us as a cybersecurity specialist and it's not unheard of for a consultant and I, i've done this job before so i know that it's done um, it's not uncommon for an organization to engage a consultant to get a cybersecurity operation off the ground. I mean, this job that we're doing right now, I have had to do before. Organizations that have no cybersecurity program or had a cybersecurity program that's currently in fucking tatters, um, and you have to basically start all over again. And then that would be, you know, a cybersecurity specialist, a consultant that's brought on board in order to, to advise and build the team and a program and, and all the governance and documentation and everything. Um, but a team of three on a cybersecurity team, you would have one person who would kind of be in charge of administration and governments, which would normally be your, uh, ISO or CISO. Oh, they got me. Wind condition damaged ICS process. So they, they got, they got in and they were able to damage one of the critical control systems. Um, hold on. I'm going to do a breakdown of this and see what happened, um, in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? All right. So one person in charge of governance and administration, generally an ISO or a CISO or something like that. Uh, then you're going to need to have somebody who's, uh, going to handle, uh, implementations and configurations. That's going to be something like a security engineer or a senior analyst, and then probably either a junior analyst or a security analyst or a privacy or compliance person to take some of the administrative overhead off. And that's, that's three people. Um, and that's alone not enough, right? You need to have some people, like lower level junior analysts, dedicated to the task of delegating things and, and taking care of um, the day to day kind of stuff. And we, we didn't have that. All right. So let's see what happened here. Because I should have been in a pretty good position to at least be aware of what was happening. Um, but maybe I missed something or or what happened. Let's, let's see what we got here. Um, well, let's 
see what their win condition was. USB drops. Social engineering attacks. That's always the Achilles heel. Social engineering, the human being, is the most reliably exploited uh, part of any security system. And that's exactly what they did here, it seems. They didn't do anything else. They just USB drop, similar to the Stuxnet attack many, many years ago. Um, you know, you drop USBs, people get curious, plug them in on their work machine, and then it's compromised. So the best way for us to have combated that would have been with um, security awareness training. But I deferred that because we had nothing at the beginning. Um, it's true. Social engineering is the most reliably exploited vector. Um, number one with a bullet even. Um, but, um, social engineering attacks is a soft skill attack. That's an administrative control and organizational control at best. Um, and, uh, even though it's the most reliably exploited, the fix for that security awareness training is notoriously unreliable. Um, and time consuming and so on. Um, so when building a security operation up from the ground up, you got to have some technical controls. You know, you can't begin with security awareness training. And it certainly would have been the first thing that I would have given to a new hire uh, if I had a fourth person. So um, I suppose that maybe w w was my fatal flaw here in this game. Uh, one of the first things I should have done is hire another person and I'm not sure I would in the real uh, in real life. I'm not sure I would have done anything differently here, um, except one thing I would have done differently is in this game, um, USB controls and system hardening and all of that is a per machine configuration, taking an entire turn for one staff member to do, and I feel like that's not a very realistic investment. Uh, you you're not going to do one-off per machine configurations and take up an entire day of a cybersecurity professional's time with that. You're going to use some kind of centralized management system, whether if it's a Windows machine, whether that's group policy or some other system where you can group machines together and push out security policies of different levels of OS hardening um, to groups of machines. That's the way to do that on a per machine basis is insane. And even if you're doing it on a per machine basis, it doesn't take all day to do that. Like we're talking, like, and well, once you know how to do it, like 20, 30 minutes tops, t absolute tops to do something like that once you know what you're doing. Uh, anyway, on my time, um, total issues down breached. I didn't have any there. Total vulnerabilities, 106. Well, yeah, I didn't have enough people to deal with them. And even if I had a fourth person, I never would have been able to deal with any of that. Uh, remediation time to... Yeah, this is just a case of social engineering. Um, I think the, the game is not wrong in the exploitability and uh, threat of social engineering attacks. They're right on that. I think that they are incorrect in the... The, the thing is, is that even with a compromised machine, I suppose we hadn't quite gotten to AV and all of that just yet. So, uh, that's unfortunate. What's this? So, oh, oh, we can get a little breakdown here um, and see what was infected. So, is that what that means? Remaining vulnerabilities for this asset, integer overflow, cross-site scripting. Why is there a cross-site scripting attack on a personal machine? You running a web server, Y Jackson? Cross site request forgery. This is these are this is a little weird. This is getting a little a little weird here. Um, I don't know if these have a significance on the red team side because I haven't seen them. But all right, let's um, let's view other. Is this the red team view? It looks like a red team view. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> let's um let's fire up a red team uh game then and see what it looks like from the other side. Let's do the same manufacturing plant so we can do a direct Oh my god, the fucking graphics. Uh we have the same quote from Dr. Henry Kissinger, red team operative, your mission is to perform reconnaissance on the new on the blue team network probe for weaknesses and find a way and hopefully you'll 
hopefully remaining undetected. Once inside, you'll need to find a way to penetrate deeper into the network in search of the ultimate prize, the industrial control system. It will require clever strategies, keen wit, and every ounce of skill in your arsenal from social engineering to system exploitation. You might even need to research more advanced skills along the way in order to succeed. You can win the game by achieving any of the following... Damage the blue team's ICS, get the blue team's profit loss meter into the red for five consecutive terms by denying key assets using malware and ransomware, and exfiltrating data. That, again, is succinct, and I can't think of a thing wrong with it. Those, those all sound uh, correct to me. Um, this is the, uh, the inherent uh, asymmetry of security, by the way. Um, the blue team, uh, in order to complete their objective, they, they must repel all of these win conditions 100 percent of the time and we saw four social engineering attacks in the last game was all it took right um whereas the attacker has way more options available to them in terms of strategies and way more opportunities to succeed and they need only succeed once out of all of their attempts in order to to win so there is a natural asymmetry to just security in general and the one thing that actually I don't like about this game is the turn-based nature of it, which is, I think, fine from uh, the perspective of the game. Uh, but in terms of the game theory of actual security, um, we would normally apply what we're known as so it's known as a Sackleberg security game or an SSG, uh, which are known to be asymmetrical, limited horizon, um, and synchronous decision games. Um, whereas this RTS feel is, uh, is asynchronous, right? We're each taking our turns one after another. Um, so let's see what we get. All right. So action, action log, red team, it's your turn. Okay, this is us. We still got three minutes. Um, reconnaissance actions, OSINT, physical recon. Yeah, those are, uh, those are true. Uh, create malicious USB. Um, we get five attackers. Five attackers. Uh, evade network protection. Nothing there yet. Nothing there yet. Physical attack actions. Physical recon. We already had that in the other menu. I don't know why they're duplicating them. No post exploit. Research skills. Research access control. Command injection. CSRF default credentials. Weird that you would have to research that, but okay. Uh, change locations, add resources, recruit hackers, or upgrade rig. All right, well, we are uh, we are going to begin with uh, creating that malicious USB. We can devote two people to that. Let's do some OSINT recon and some physical recon. Let's see what our progression tree looks like here. OSINT recon leads to host scan, attack campaign, spear phishing attack. Port scan, end campaign, service enumeration. Wow, that is a long chain. Buzzing reverse engineering. Okay, well, the red team makes a little bit less sense than the blue team did. It's still, oh, it's okay. But the fact that you need to do OSINT recon so you can do host scanning, so you can do port scanning, so you can do service enumeration, so you can do fuzzing, and reverse engineering and pan and password attacks uh, doesn't make sense. That I don't understand. Uh, change location. We got a Wi-Fi scan hanging out here by itself. I don't know what that's supposed to be attached to. Um, malicious USB. We did. We're gonna use this USB drop. Need no protection. Harvest credentials. Uh, I mean, there's a lot here though. There is a lot here, which is nice to see. Let's see the network view. Oh, this is the network. Okay, mode view. It's nothing for us to see, of course. Skills. Incorrect access control. I don't know what this... Oh, these are skills that we can research. That's right. Okay, let's uh, end the turn. We don't have to worry about money or anything here as attackers, of course. So It seems uh, that uh, in terms of the game, and again, this is just from a game theory perspective, uh, that win conditions, it's already counting down and I haven't hit start yet. The timer is already counting down. Um, <clears throat> anyway, in terms, uh, if we're looking at this from a game theory perspective, uh, in those terms, um, the win conditions are definitely heavily 
uh, skewing in favor of the attacker. I can tell already uh, because we have much fewer things to worry about. We have more resources and uh, everything to begin. You would normally see, for example, in order to balance things out in terms of uh, the game, uh, that to balance out the fact that they don't have to worry about funding or anything, that uh, doing things would take considerably more time. Again, just from a game perspective to uh, balance out uh, the two sides, we don't have that here. Uh, everything seems to be exactly the same as it was on Blue Team, except for the fact that we don't have to worry about these certain things or anything like that. There's probably some kind of notoriety. Uh, I don't know what that is. Probably some kind of like notoriety or, 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 or something that I don't see just temporary resources just yet, but uh, uh, so far it's obvious that the wind conditions heavily skew in favor of the attack, which is actually true to life as well, like I just said. So let's just use be created. Step aside, Mr. Robot. I've never seen Mr. Robot. Um, a created you malicious USB is available for 10 turns and shows next and shows next to the end turn, but when active. With an open source intelligence for time is a great start because you need targets before you can attack. Sometimes attacking hacking remotely isn't the only way in. Scanning location with actual boots on the ground is a good idea. Alright, got my peeps back. Uh host scan, evade network protection, social engineering. Um we don't um Functions, you know. Uh, perimeter method. Okay, I'm just I'm just checking to see what we got here available to us. All right, let's start. Uh, let's start fishing. It takes. Okay, that's quite an investment in people. Um, since we did OSINT, we can do a spear fishing attack, and it takes less people. It takes more time, but that's okay. Let's see what else we got here. Malicious USB drop. What does it take for us to get to that? It looks like we should be able to do it, but we can't, apparently. What do we have to do for this? Do we have to move past the perimeter in order to do it? Is that what, is that what it, I'm not sure what, what it's at, what we need to do in order to do that. It's fine. Let's, uh, let's focus on something else. Uh, not that. That's not what I was looking for. Um, lost two, lost two, two, three. Yeah, I do have two people available. Let's research default credentials. I don't know why we would need to do that. Okay. Let's put those two people, or let's put one of them on a host scan. And... That is one thing we didn't have up last time, I believe. Uh, I don't think we did an IDS. That would have been a good buy as well. Um, What else can we do here? All right, we got a couple of them here.
Okay. It's not where they said it would be. They said it would be by the end turn button, but it's not. But also, I'm not sure what to do with it. That's okay. We're committed to other things right now. Spearfishing attack successful. You're a cyber angler. You caught the big one. Your fishing campaign succeeded, and you have compromised an asset. This guy over here. Still ransomware. Still disruptive malware. We'll scan. Harvest credentials. Exfiltrate. Isn't exfiltrate one of our win conditions? Vulnerabilities identified. None. It is identified. None. All right. Service enumeration. Um, sniffer. I keep hitting this wondering what it is, and every time I'm like, yep, that makes sense. Let's do service enumeration on Windows computer. Reconnaissance complete. Effective threat vector found. I'll go find some vulnerabilities to exploit. Password attack. Um, I mean, exfiltrated data, so I guess that wasn't a win condition. All right, let's do password attack. Um, oh, I should have found some public vulnerabilities. I thought I would have enough people. Guess not. Sniffing completed. You have found exposed credentials in the clear by sniffing it. Okay. Um, if there is a notoriety button of some kind, I'm not seeing anything, um, but that's fine. I wouldn't expect to know that. Um, uh, reverse engineering. What are we reverse engineering? Oh, okay. That's not generally what that means, but okay. Oh, that requires five people, I see. Password attack. No. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do a, another scan. Um, go scan. And service enumeration on that guy. Well, why we would do a service enumeration on that, I don't know. Definitely shouldn't. Let's do a water and campaign with our last two people. And continue. Found well, public vulnerabilities. You found at least one new vulnerability. Okay. Holy smokes. Does, what does attack give us? Oh, it's DDoS. Um, looking at the subnets, they're all 2.9. Um, this one's... Sounds a little odd in that cluster. Low numbered IPs generally, I mean, they shouldn't be, but we're talking about um, 
in terms of uh, distributions, uh, we can see that uh, the lower lower ones here, like for example, theory, uh, is five four. X brown here is uh, eight seven. I'm gonna guess that the lower numbers are probably servers. So let's pick a couple here and just do some scans. And let's pick a high one too, because this one here is nine nine, and that's that's suspicious as hell. Access cut off. It looks like the blue team managed to kick you out of their internal network somehow. Oh, that's unfortunate. Where are we left with? Oh, yeah, they found us. We were being pretty aggressive with the scans. Uh, obviously. So. All right, let's do. Probably. Oh. Oh, sorry, we need all five people back for that. Buzzing. Um, we got one person left, so let's do a... Eh, we'll do a post scan. Let's do an evasion, though. I, again, I don't know. I, I can't exactly see everything here. Hold on, let me look at the icon legend. This asset has been good. Okay, so now I know what that meant when I saw it last time. This is this one vulnerability with advanced. Advanced what? This asset has at least one research vulnerability. Identified. Okay. Oh, I didn't see that you can scroll down. Why does it take two people to research heap overflows? Format strings, IDS evasion. This uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. But the file inclusion, physical security. All right. We don't want to end the campaign just yet. Uh, let's find public vulnerabilities again. Fuzzing Jellyk, okay. Password attack. Let's just see if speed is gone. Okay, let's create another one. Uh, it was a server that I saw before. Service enumeration. It's their AD server. Let's attack the shit out of them. Um, yeah, we're going to harvest those credentials. It's their AD server, so this is their user repository. And let's also evade network. I'm not sure exactly what that's doing for us, like in terms of whatever, but it's... Our next attack will deploy intrusion. Our next attack will deploy intrusion detection system or network detection evasion techniques in an attempt. Okay. Thinking, okay. I'm not sure why I'm getting that now and I didn't before, but okay. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, I don't want to really get a disruption win, but at the same time, why not, I guess? Let's see what happens, at least. I mean, I'm still learning the mechanics of the game. Um, okay, service generation, the service generation. DMC, okay. All right. It's not like somewhere on the AD server. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> All right, I don't know if people for that. Well, let's do another host scan, I guess. Scan. It's not really giving me like a success or not on oh it failed. Okay, that explains that. Let's try it again, I guess. I don't know, maybe they have A V or something. Right. The malware keeps failing for some reason. It's uh it seems like it's I don't know what if what I'm missing like in terms of the game. Uh what need be done. But uh, clearly uh, a waste of resources here, so. Um. Exfiltrate data? Yeah. I mean, this is also local co-op. And uh, I'm not going to lie, it would be extremely fun to do this um, um, uh, did I say co-op? Not co-op. 1v1. Um, LAN is what I was thinking of. Like a, that that would be, would be fun as well. I am thinking about that. If I had a couple of students playing this game or something. Um, or even a couple of teams or, or, or something. Um, that would be a good time. Splunk. It's using actual products and it's using them correctly. Um, and I, I haven't seen any like glaringly egregious, like appropriation of terms or, uh, or anything like that yet. So, I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm surprised. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna... Not gonna lie, I I didn't have high hopes for this uh, game when I first started playing it. I do think um, it's probably not as necessarily educational or something um, as uh, as it may be advertising because again, you know, you kind of need to know what you're doing first, um, or at least you know it's not teaching me anything that I don't already know. But I am using the things that I already know, so that. That's something, at least. Um, smash. What do I have my people tied up in? I'm supposed to have five. I have... Only some of them committed to that. I only have one free. I don't know. I also don't know how to make use of these. Let's do another host scan. 
Nothing. I think we got all we can get out of that. All right, let's just end it. Plus two resources. I still don't know where by where the two that are missing are. Did they get? Uh, did I lose resources before when I got caught? Is that what it is? It doesn't say. It doesn't look like it. Oh, I don't have enough resources for what action? Oh, wait. Why? Where did they all go? What happened? Upgrade rig. Oh, shit. I didn't want to do that. I didn't know that's what that meant. Fuck. How long does that take? Can I cancel it? Yes, I can. Okay. okay. I, I don't know where my two people are. They're just gone. They don't seem to be doing anything, and they don't seem to be in jail or, or anything either, so I honestly don't know. Uh, let's check our... Yeah, I haven't checked it this on this in a while. Um, oh, that's not really what I wanted to do. But that's okay. I could use that. Um, let's research change location. Oh, wait. We cured... Uh, Stole a ransom one. Let's try it again. And we're going to end our watering hole campaign to move to another one because we are kind of spinning our wheels on this one. Uh, Stole our malware again, too. Campaign ended. Let's do a new one now. How about a uh, how about an email fishing campaign? Now that you have control of an asset, you can use it as a pivot, meaning you can perform a host scan from that asset to reveal other assets in the same zone. Yes, I am aware. Um And then let's also do stop ransomware on um, did we fail on the AD server? Yeah we did. So we'll try it on that one. I'm not sure what the what uh, it takes to succeed on something like that. Because I can't seem to get it to, to go. Campaign port scan, service enumeration. Public deck, okay. The red team is, I'm not going to lie. Um, so the red versus blue concept is um, a neat idea. I'm finding that the attacker role seems to be a lot less fun because the fun of red teaming is trying to figure out how things are working and clever ways to get around stuff and all of that kind of a thing. And I'm finding that the red team aspect of this game is a 
it's falling into the same trap as a lot of hacking simulators, which makes sense because that's kind of that side of the game. That's what this is, right? Um, but really, I'm, it's just a clicking simulator. I'm just clicking things. Um, I'm not figuring out any puzzles or, or learning anything new. I'm just kind of managing resources and clicking around. And I'm not, I'm not really doing anything. There's nothing really hands-on going on here, which doesn't work for the red team side, but does work for the blue team side. Because the blue team is strategy and management and tactics and resource allocation and appropriation and that kind of thing that is the blue team world it's just that you know what i really would have i guess what i'm trying to say is what i really would have loved to seen is a red team versus blue team game like this where the blue team is pretty much the same with maybe some modifications to it um, but the red team side is more like a game like gray hack where they are actually hands-on keyboard in a terminal looking for exploits against the blue team's assets rather than just choosing things. That would be an amazing game where the blue team side is basically what you see here and the red team side is a, 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 an actual good hacking simulator, like full-fledged hacking simulator. That would be a hell of a game right there. But I'm, 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 I'm finding that the red team is, it's just less fun. You know, I'm not actually doing anything cool. I'm just clicking stuff, you know. Um, so now that this is done. Um, okay. Windows computer service enumeration for that. Um, did I already do harvest creds on this? Oh, it failed. Well, do it again. What is this? No, oh, it's the notifications button. Failed again? How the fuck do you keep failing? Oh, shit. I need two people to create a malicious USB. I'm still not entirely sure how... To, uh, the, the, the blue team game I had failed because of the malicious USBs, um, but I have no idea how to use them. That's what attack... Okay. For that. All right. Did it fail? God damn it. I don't know. These things keep failing. I don't know what goes into success or failure. All right. Leave a malware in for you, so we're going to find provides an opportunity. So attacker has loaded USB to the software. They will sometimes leave the USB to the They will pick it up. Person knows the address. Plug down on any system that do have configurations. Driver software on the drive will run, exposing the system to malicious code. Okay, but it doesn't say how to do that. Um... Create malicious USB, malicious USB drop. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know everything about this game. You know, I've only been playing it for... Looks like I'm up to about an hour and a half now, give or take. Did it fail again? It did. I, I, okay, I, I feel like I'm wasting my time then. Um, because I don't know what goes into success or failure. Thank you. 
We failed and failed. I don't know what I don't know what determines success or failure on that. Maybe I should start researching some stuff. Maybe that's what I'm missing because I haven't done that yet. All right, I did do that with one thing. I think I did. Um, let's research physical security. Is that what I need in order to? Default credentials enabled. Leak password. Physical security. Okay. Well, that takes some time. Um, lock picking, bumping, shimming, and all other manner of physical entry techniques have increased. Okay, well, that doesn't really help us, does it? Oh, we got a new machine. Oh, uh, okay. I see that. <sighs> yeah, I'm finding the uh, red team portion of this game to be... Uh, it's a little bit more boring. It's a little bit dull. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not mad at it. Oh, shit. What does that icon mean? Uh, oh, has at least one researched vulnerability. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um. Disrupted now. Shit, I should have sent somebody else to do another one. Oh, is that it? Commit to a password attack. Which failed. Activate ransomware. Oh, we actually got one. Hey, we got ransomware on their AD. Nice. Um, password attack. Password attack fail. Yeah. Password attack's probably failing because they don't use default crits or something like that that's right I, I i'm not getting i had five people working for me i'm down to three i don't know where they're going i don't know why they're not coming back um the game's not really giving me any information on that they're just i'm just losing people for some reason and i can't recruit more so oh command injection nice stack overflow um, I don't know, can't research that, but what can I do? Um, let's do another host scan. Maybe another one will come up. Nope. Host scan from the area. Yep. Okay. 
Is that what goes into the success of these attacks? Is my knowledge level on, of them? I mean, that would make sense, I guess. Failed. Okay. All right. One researched vulnerability. Can't remember what researching fuzzing get us. What is that the uh, gateway to? It's a gateway to well, an attack. So as we could probably end the email phishing campaign. <laughs> Oh, all right. How about a social media campaign? Oh, that's what my guys have been tied up in. Now I got all seven back because I had the they they are perpetually stuck in the fishing campaign while they're working. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. I still, I mean, is attack seems to just be a, a GDOS attack. Um, which is weird. Like, it's just a, a weird way to categorize them, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see. Ah, look at that. See, I don't know. I can't specifically call out certain attacks that... Only, these are the only ones I have available. I don't know how I get to um shit like like all of these other ones that are sitting here. I don't know how I get to them. Um, but I guess let's upgrade the rig now that we can kind of commit to that. I'm glad my people didn't just disappear. That's nice. Our credential succeeded. And that succeeded, so that's good. succeeded too. Let's do, let's pilfer. Sticky fingered filter from Berlin down to please. Uh, okay, I won. What was my win conditions? It doesn't say. Um... Company production compromised. So that was that was an attrition win. I had dragged them down for so long uh, that they eventually went bankrupt. So let's see. Well, let's see what uh, they did first. Total issues down breached. Five. One of four. Um, one detected. One of five detected. One of five resolved. Okay, that's when they kicked me out of their network. I guess the first time. 
Total vulnerability is 114. Discovered, remediated, average remediation time, total budget. Oh, wow. They had a lot more budget than I had to work with. Holy shit. They requested more budget seven times, and they succeeded five times. That is insane. Um... And almost all of that was on their cybersecurity program. Staff utilization was very high. Threat intelligence was low because they didn't spend any of that on any intel or logging or anything. Uh, meanwhile, over here on my side, uh, direct cyber attacks. Only two of the ten that I launched succeeded. This is just a perfect illustration of what I was talking about before, about the asymmetry of security. I could launch 10 attacks, and I could easily afford to do that. It didn't cost, it was not, it wasn't even, like, I wasn't even making a concerted effort to launch as many attacks as possible. And I didn't need any of them to, I didn't need all of them to succeed. I just needed one of them to succeed. Um, I didn't do any physical intrusion because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, social engineering attacks, I launched... A fishing campaign, I launched a watering hole campaign, and I launched a spear fishing campaign. Um, and neither the fishing or watering hole worked, probably because they were spending some money on security awareness. But spear, spear fishing did work. And again, so uh, social engineering was the, the vector. That's what led to the compromise. Total assets 35, pivots lost, none. Okay. So again, that's the asymmetry. That's the game for you. Um, but I'm going to come back for a part three uh, where I'm going to run through another blue team game and I'm going to, uh, we're going to win this thing. Uh, we're going to see what it takes to win as the blue team. See what they had. So they did do network segmentation. They did do, uh, what else do they got here? They, they did have Splunk. So they had their seam. Um, They did have their backups up. They they got all the way to penetration testing. They hired new staff. Oh, they started it. They didn't get a chance to finish it. Um, it's request budget. They're doing backups, patching. Um, yeah, yeah. Install AV. They focused a lot on endpoint security. It looks like the ICS vendor certification. Yeah, they focused a lot on the individual endpoints. I did not have the luxury of doing that uh, when I ran through it. Um, so, um, yeah, good. good. So, uh, again, uh, I'm still kind of on the fence about the game. It is definitely a good game. Like, it, it, if you're into cybersecurity, it is a good game. Red team side, very weak, but that's because they're trying to do some kind of symmetry between the red team and blue team. And you can't really do symmetry because there just isn't any in the real world. They're, they're two sides of the same coin, offensive security and defensive security. They are two sides of the same coin, but they really don't operate the same way and you can't really expect them to. Defense is by nature a completely different animal than offense. Um, you need both, but it's a completely different animal. Let me put it to you this way. Um, in offense, whether that is, uh, well, no matter what the circumstances, whether it's cyber offense or, or whatever, it's always, um, it's always speed, surprise, and violence of action. That will win the day. Um, but you don't want any of those things in defense, right? You don't want surprises. Uh, you don't want things to move too fast because if some if you have too many things moving too fast, they tend to get ahead of your resources and then they're out on their own and then they're vulnerable. Uh, and you certainly don't want violence. The the whole point is to pre prevent violence from from occurring, right? To protect, I guess, in this case. So they have completely different strategies. They have completely different approaches. Completely different philosophies of in terms of teams and how they operate different engagements different concerns different resources um it's just a totally different ball game and 
it is reflected in the two sides of the game, the red team and the blue team. Uh, you know, whereas with the blue team, you have, you know, threat Intel and the company bottom line and staffing and budget, uh, and certifications, and all that garbage, uh, that's all on the blue team side. Uh, but that stuff isn't on the red team side. Um, and that alone shows that the approach of the whole RTS with the mapping and the, the using the mouse to just pick and choose things, um, isn't the right approach for the red team side. I see why they did it. Right. They wanted some symmetry and, you know, having two people working together uh, or against each other in this case, um, it, it makes sense from a game perspective. It just doesn't make sense from both a realism perspective, but also from a fun perspective, because there's just uh, it's just not as fun to be on a red team. You're, you're just there's not really a challenge. There's not really a strategy uh, per se, uh, as there is with the with the blue team approach in the game. at least. Um, that said, um, like I said before, I think having a blue team that is more or less exactly like this, I do. I would make some changes if I could. But a red team side that is more of a good hacking simulator along the lines of gray hack or something like that uh, would be perfect. But then you are losing the turn-based approach, right? Um, having You can't take turns if you're going to have somebody actually at a keyboard searching for exploits and all that kind of stuff. But I do don't consider that necessarily a bad thing. What I would do in that case is I would give the blue team about probably one round, three minutes uh, to do some initial setup. Uh, and then at that point afterwards, do it in real time, you know, or something along those lines. Again, I haven't given this any thought. I'm literally making this. I'm pulling it right out of my ass right now. Um, but hey, you know, that's just my two cents. I want to come back for a part three. I want to do uh, one more blue team side. And uh, at that point, I will make my decision as to whether or not this is everything that they said it would be. Uh, but I tell you, uh, the red team side wasn't that much fun. The blue team side definitely was. So the next next part will be the decider for me. So come back, stay tuned for that, and see what I end up with.